In this video, I'm going to show you how to attach essentially a hard drive, a volume, to a running Windows 2012 server instance on AWS. In this video, I'm making some assumptions. First, that you have an AWS account. And secondly, that you already have a running Windows instance that you can attach the volume to. If you don't have the account or have not launched a running Windows instance, then I have a series of videos that you can take a look at that will show you how to do that. So I have already logged into my AWS account and I'm going to click here on services which gives me this uh, menu of all of the possible services that AWS has. And I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, EC2, which is the Elastic Cloud Compute. And I get a page here that indicates how many instances that I have, but it's better to go to this uh, instance menu item over here on the left. And this will give me a list of all of my instances. You can see that the one at the bottom here is currently running, okay, and it is a Windows instance. And in order to easily find it, I've given it a name here. So you can give an instance a name by mousing over the name field and then clicking on this little pen icon and you can put in the instance. So I just named this instance by the date that I created it. And this is the instance that I'm going to use to attach the volume. So to create a essentially a disk drive to attach to a running instance. I'm going to go down here to Elastic Block Store, EBS, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the volume. And you can see that I have quite a number of volumes already created. Chances are this list is going to be empty for you. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead here and create the volume. And I want to use a general purpose SSD. So SSD is a solid state device. So we're not actually going to be mounting a regular magnetic hard drive. We're going to be mounting a, a solid state device. But there are other options here. So you can see that you can mount a magnetic disk if you want to. What you don't want to do because it will cause a fair amount of charges is use provision SSD. Provisions means that it guarantees a certain level of performance in the reads and writes and uh, you'll pay for that. So the size you can specify right here, 100 gigabytes is, is fine for right now. Now, another thing I should have said is that the availability zone for the drive has to match the availability zone for the instance. And I'll go back and show you this in just a second, but the instance that I'm gonna be attaching to, I believe is in US East 1E. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that right now. There's no snapshot. I won't tell you about that right now, and we don't need to encrypt it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And it will start creating the volume. Now, sometimes this takes a few minutes. So while that is happening, let's go back and make absolutely sure that the availability zone of my instance, the one that I'm going to be using, which is right here, is in fact US East 1E. So that's the first thing, is those have to match. So we're going to go back to the volumes here and just wait until the volume is created. And this volume is the one that just was created. You'll see it's created January 17th. When you get a bunch of these, it's sometimes difficult to keep everything straight. And it's now available. So again, I'm going to go ahead and name this so that I can match everything up easily. This is for the 2014-01-15 instance that I had previously running. So let's go ahead and do that. Now to attach this volume to the instance that's running, the first thing I need to do is select it so that there's a blue dot here in this little uh, button. And then I'm going to go to Actions and say Attach the Volume. And what's going to happen is it's going to come up with a volume ID and I need to connect to the correct instance. And you'll notice here it says in US East 1. So if I click in this field, I should get a list of all of the instances that I have in US East 1E. And it turns out that I only have the one. Okay, there's its ID number. And this right here in parentheses is the label that I will have given it. 
So it's this one, this instance that I created on uh, January 16th here. So let's go ahead and click that. Now down in the device field, it will probably load something like XVDF and, and you want to use that name or, or a similar name, okay? And in fact, you can get into trouble if you don't name things correctly. So let me just take a moment here and talk about the documentation. To find the documentation that allowed me to figure out how to do this, I did a Google search where I searched for the term AWS Attach Volume to Windows Instance and the main articles that I then read are this one attaching a volume to an instance and then making an Amazon EBS volume available for use. So the first link uh, talks about just what I've gone through so far. Okay, and it has a table here that talks about device naming. And there are basically two ways that instances are la launched and the details aren't really important here they're paravirtual and HVM but the device name list that we're dealing with here are these uh, XVD and then letters A to Z and you'll notice that reserved for the root volume is dev XVDA and if you want to know more about these virtualization types you can do a search for something like HVM and you'll get a page that talks about the virtualization types. As I say, I don't really think this is important now, but if you uh, want to learn more about it, you certainly can. Okay, so we're going to go back here to our management console, and we're just going to accept this default of XVDF. And now I'm going to go ahead and say attach. And again, this may take a little while to actually complete the process. All right, so once the volume is attached and its state is in use, I can now go through the procedure to actually make it available on the instance. But I want to correct one little thing here. I actually did not name this correctly. My instance that I'm using was created on the 16th, not the 15th. So let me go ahead and fix that. So now to make this volume available, I'm going to be following the documentation that I found through this second link. If I go ahead and click on it, I'm going to open it in a new tab. What you'll see is I get documentation for making an Amazon EBS volume available for use, but this documentation refers to making it available on Linux. But if I read carefully here, I'll see that there's a link to making the volume available on Windows. So if I go ahead and click on that, it's these instructions that I'm going to be showing you in the next few minutes. I'm assuming again that you already have a Windows instance running and have logged into it. And if you uh, don't know how to do that, I have a series of four videos that talk about creating and provisioning for data science a Windows instance on AWS. So I've now already logged into this instance using the Windows RDP, Remote uh, Desktop uh, Protocol. And this is the desktop. So if I hit the Windows key, I'm going to be flipping back between the start page, which is what you have in Windows 2008, and the, the desktop. So first I want to see what drives I have available. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the File Explorer, and that's going to come up. And you'll see that uh, it shows me devices and drives, and I only have Logical Disk C, which is the root drive so far. So now to make the new drive available, what I'm going to do is hit the Windows key, and then I'm going to type in admin and this will automatically create this search that will land on administrative tools which is what I want so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the administrative tools and then I'm going to click on computer management right here and then I'm going to come down in this left pane and click on disk management and it's giving me a prompt here which I'm going to go ahead and cancel for right now. The main thing is that if you have successfully attached the 
drive to the instance. You are going to have a an entry here that says disk one or, or perhaps if you've attached more than one disk two and so on. Uh, but if this is not here, then you've not successfully attached the volume to the instance. And chances are you have used a device name, the XVDF is what we used, uh, but then I would try a different uh, device name. So far, if things are working, you're going to get this line right here. Now, this disk needs to be online. And if it hasn't come up as online, you're going to want to right click here and then change it from offline to online. So this disk came up online already. So I'm going to show you what you would do if it had come up offline. And I believe that it's likely, if you've never done this before, to come up offline just like this. So you, what you do is you right click and then change it to online. Now the drive has come up completely unformatted. So what you need to do now is format it and make it available. So go ahead and mouse over to the left part here where it says disk one and right click and then do initialize disk. And then you'll get the initialize disk dialog. It had come up automatically when I first went into disk management, uh, but that did not happen for me the first time I did this. So I, I've taken you through the process from the beginning. And you can go ahead and leave it as a master boot record partition style and go ahead and click OK. And now if I mouse over the window where it says 100 gigabytes unallocated and right click, and I don't think this works over here now, it doesn't. So if I'm right clicking over here where it says disk one, it's not going to work. I have to come over into the volume and right click. And now I can just click on new simple volume. And that will launch the new simple volume wizard. I can go ahead and click next and it tells me the disk space in megabytes and so this was a hundred gigabyte disk it tells me the minimum maximum and the size and you can just go ahead and leave that where it is and go ahead and click next and then it will tell me or allow me to pick the drive letter that this will be attached to the default D is just fine so go ahead and click next again and it needs to be formatted. You can perform a quick format. There's no problem there. Probably the best file system to use usually is NTFS. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. And then we're going to click Finish. And it changes from, I think it was uh, uninitialized here, to new volume and it has the, the size. But the key thing is if I go back to the File Explorer, that's not it, let's go back to File Explorer, here it is, you'll see that right next to Local Disk C, there's now the new volume D. Okay, and I can just click on this to change into this volume which is empty. I can right click it and create new files for example. I'll just create a text document okay, and I'll just leave it with the default name. So this shows you how to create and link a volume. This volume is now usable under the drive letter D just the way you would on any Windows computer. So the very last thing that I'm going to do in this video is to clean things up a bit. So let me start closing some windows. I just closed File Explorer. I should close the Computer Management window. Don't need that anymore. And then the Administrative Tools. And then if I go and relaunch File Explorer, you'll see that the new volume is available. And if I click on it, you'll see that the empty file that I created, uh, new text document, is, is available. So this concludes my tutorial on how you attach a volume to an AWS Windows instance.